Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this tracer text effect in Cinema 4D. Um, obviously using the tracer as well as an emitter. And yeah, there's a lot of different variations you can go about doing um, with this. This is just the one I came up with because I thought it looked the best. And I didn't really play around with it uh, as much as I hoped because I haven't had a lot of time the last week and a half or so uh, when I sort of started figuring this out. Uh, but yeah, you can see a couple variations that I have popping up on the screen now. So there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and that's just with the kind of effect coming from the bottom. Um, obviously, with the emitter and the effects with the emitter, you can create a lot more. Um, and I'll kind of show you guys that so you guys can experiment for yourselves. But let's just hop in to the tutorial. Uh, by the way, I'm using my Lightroom and my materials from my store. If you're interested, links are down below, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this all real quick and get started. So we want to get some text, so I'm going to go MoGraph, Mo Text, align that middle, and I'm just going to do the same thing I did before, Metal, 80, oops. By the way, I do not know why I made the text say Metal. I was going to do a metal effect earlier on and I just guess I never switched the text. Uh, and I'm going to bring this uh, down a little bit, This uh, the main text in my Lightroom. Uh, you can see by the way, if you have my Lightroom, I moved the camera down and sort of adjusted some of the lights to fit this. So it's not exactly my Lightroom, but it's just my lights moved around a little bit. Um, but the font we want to use is Base 9. Um, where are you at? There you are. Base 9. And then we want to go caps, fillet cap for both. Um, start and end and make the radius 1. So that is our text um, font and setup and stuff. Now we want to adjust each letter and stoof. So uh, have your MoTeX selected. Go to MoGraph, Effector, Random. And you want to adjust the position, probably keep it fairly small numbers. So I'm just going to put five in for each of these real quick and then kind of adjust accordingly. Yeah, X I don't want too much. Eh, y, yeah, that's fine. Just really low numbers. We can adjust uh, this manually later on, which I'll show you. But then you want to check rotation and we want to have a little negative number a little negative number and then a little positive number and we get something like this um, which is pretty cool that's why I love the random effector but um, I want to adjust this manually a little bit more oops sorry about that um, so let's go to Motex press C on the keyboard open up the folder twice or the null twice unless you have two words then there will be a two you want to open both of those up and just drag the text out and then we can go ahead and delete the random and mo text. So we just have this null with our letters. And I'm gonna add this material fruititious from my materials pack. Again, link down below. Um, and we wanna adjust each of these letters. So I want them to kinda be bunched together. Uh, I think it looks better with this effect. So I'm gonna bring the M over. I'm gonna select the E as well, bring them both over a little closer. Get the A and the L, bring them closer. Get the L, bring that closer. Cool, so now they're a little closer. I said closer a lot there, holy crap. Um, you can also just adjust uh, in the Mo graph or the Mo text, you can bring the text closer together, but I just prefer to do it this way. Uh, just personal preference. Uh, but we wanna go ahead and duplicate this null twice. And I'm gonna hide uh, or close the group and I want to add uh, a colored material on one of these so I'm using the material Graceffa from my materials pack add that to one and the one that I added to I'm actually gonna hide so I'm gonna select both or make both these dots red by double clicking on each of them and then the other metal one we want to go to atom array and add that to the atom array I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna make the sphere radius one so now that'll be an outline of the text and we just want to add that color material there as well. 
All right, now that's basically the text setup. We can, we're still gonna be adjusting the colored letters later on, um, but let's set up the effect now. So we wanna go to simulate particles and we wanna drag this down by clicking this top bar. So we have this little window and then we wanna click em emitter. And then uh, also you wanna go, I just wanna do, I just do shift uh, C because I can never find the tracer, uh, I sh it's probably in MoGraph or something, but I can never find it. So I just do the search and double click and make sure you have the emitter selected when you add the tracer or else this won't work. So if I pop out of the camera here and zoom in, uh, if I just go to my timeline down here, which by the way, you wanna have it have a lot of frames. So I have 500. If I play this, you can see I have the uh, particles being emitted, but they're being traced with this line. And if you don't have the emitter selected when you select the tracer, um, you'll just have the particles and they won't be traced. So make sure you have them traced. And now go to, I'm actually gonna drag this back to zero. Go to the emitter, go to rotation, rotate it 90 degrees, actually negative 90 degrees. We want it facing down and then also, I'm gonna just rotate a little bit. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom of my text. Um, not all the way below, but like somewhere there. So it's still overlapping the text a little bit. And then let's adjust the size. So I'm gonna expand it a little bit and then just expand the width to that of our text or close to. And then let's drag this back. So bring it back. So it's not, not any part of it is in front of the text. Actually, we could probably do a little tiny bit ahead of the text, but not a lot. So it should be like something like that. And then if I hop back into my camera, if I play this, you can see we have particles going down. And now uh, we wanna make these sort of 3D-ish. So let's get the, uh, let's go to NURBS sweep and also go to splines rectangle add the rectangle to the sweep and also the tracer and if i play this you'll see these big boxes coming down um, it doesn't look too good we have to adjust the size of the rectangle so i'm going to do 50 and 50. so it's a not a rectangle it's a square let's play that and you can see we got littler um, boxes sort of coming down so now let's actually get the effect we want so if we select the emitter actually you don't have to select it but we want to play around with this little box over here now we have a bunch of options here but we want to select turbulence and then rotation and then we don't need this box anymore so we can click out of it but if I play this now you can see we start getting a bunch of weird things this is where I say you can play around with it so now we're getting like a circular thing, which in itself is pretty cool. Um, but let's go back here and actually adjust for uh, the effect we want. But this is the stage where you can start expanding and exp or expanding, experimenting on your own and creating some uh, cool stuff by yourself. So let's select actually both the turbulence and rotation. I'm gonna hop out of my camera and I'm gonna rotate both of these downwards 90 degrees zoom out and if i play this you can see we start to get the effect uh we want i actually want to hop out of this camera again and move these back so if we bring them back sort of with um where the emitter is and then also we can adjust some of these settings so turbulence you can bump that strength to like 10. rotation you can bump that to like 30 or whatever you want. Again, you can start experimenting now. And now we want to hop to sweep the sweep nerves and go to the object and at end scale, we want to set that to zero. So now they will go into a point. So if we play this, you can see we start to get the effect we want. And actually the rotation, I'm going to put that to 25. Play that. And you can see we sort of get that effect now. It's just a pretty cool effect and 
there's a lot, a uh, lot of different variations you can get if you just adjust settings. So if we bump the strength, let's uh, do some crazy. Let's do 30. Maybe adjust the scale. I don't even remember what the scale does, but let's play that. You can see we get a bit of a different look. Sorry if you hear bell jingling. That's my dog. He keeps pacing back and forth. I don't know why. Um, and then once you find something you're happy with, you would just want to duplicate the sweet nerbs and right click, select children, click C on the keyboard, right click, select children, right click, connect objects and delete. So now you have this as just a solid object that you can do whatever with. And you can go back to your timeline so you don't have anything interfering. So now you just have this object and you can mess around with it. So I'm gonna hop out my camera. <laughs> I'm gonna hop out of the camera, drag it back so everything is behind the text. And now we wanna adjust the letters behind, but let's add our colored material to this first. And now let's go to this uh, text folder. We're gonna make it visible now. And I'm gonna select everything, zoom out, and just bring it back, first of all, and then rotate. And let's just start messing with these letters. So I'm gonna rotate it a bit. Maybe bring it forward. Ooh, that's a little too much. Bring it to the side. Maybe that's a little too much rotation. Bring it up. And I guess I'll just fast forward this for you guys. All right, there we go. Just I adjusted all the letters, and I try to cover up like the tops of the effect. I didn't do such a good job this time, but on the original I did a pretty good job. But you can just kind of play around and get it to the point where it's all hidden and yeah you can move it up even a little further if we want but whatever for a tutorial it's good enough um, we can also add another atom array and just drag the sweep in there and you can see we can either keep it like that It'd be a pretty interesting look but i just do the standard one sphere add a colored material to that and then we have Hold on, let me change my display to just shading. And then we just have uh, like the outline and stuff. So that's a pretty cool look too. And you can have both of them. So I can just duplicate that and have it as well. Maybe change the color of the Admiral Array. But I'm going to render this out for you guys. And that's essentially the, the tutorial. Like I said, you can do a lot of experimentation and create a lot of cool things. Um, like I showed you when we first added the rotation and turbulence, how it was going in a circle. Like that alone would be cool in itself. And there's so many different things you can probably do. I just haven't gotten to them to experiment. Um, if I find something else though, I'll be sure to make a tutorial on it or tweet it out. So be sure to follow me on Twitter, add my Snapchat, which is Quezzy. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Click the little bell thing so you get the notifications. And I'm just going to render this out for you guys. Um, also, if this video hits 100 likes, I'll include this Cinema 4D file in the description, uh, minus the Lightroom. But yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. This tutorial. If you did, please leave a like. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.